Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Getting Started with Events. Just a couple of things before um, I introduce our guest speaker. Um, the webinar will be around 45 to 50 minutes long. At the end, we will do Q&A. So if you think of some questions along the way, go ahead and type those into the box that you see in the GoToWebinar window. And we'll be more than happy to answer as many of those as we can at the end of the webinar. To hopefully uh, answer one of the questions that we get at pretty much every one of our webinars, um, the question, is this being recorded? Uh, the answer is yes, it is. This will be available on our recorded webinars uh, tab on our help site next week. So if you want to go back and reference some of the great information from this webinar, you'll be able to do that easily. So let's get started. Today we have with us Eric Schrader from GiveZooks, and he's going to take us through some of the great things you can do with our new events tool, as well as lots of examples um, to help inspire you all. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Eric. Hi, Eric. Uh, thanks, Jill, and hi, everyone. So the, the uh, first thing I thought we'd do is kind of take a you know talk about what events is at a high level, and then we'll just get into some examples. But um, so events at a high level, it's going to allow you to um, create and publish online events and do that relatively quickly. Uh, you'll be able to send and track email invitations and reminders that are related to that event and, and, and understand response rates uh, for those as well. Uh, there's a lot of promotion and uh, successful events are, are really driven by um, great promotion. So, uh, so there's a lot of integrated promotion for Facebook and Twitter as well as um, being able to sell tickets in multiple venues. So being able to sell tickets online on your website, uh, on, on the event page, but also on your Facebook page. Uh, and a, a key um, thing that, uh, that we think is uh, extremely important is to be able to um, uh, involve sponsors and, and uh, be able to recognize your sponsors. So there's, there's uh, a lot of things around that, and we'll talk about those. For the uh, nonprofit organizations that might be listening, uh, there is uh, some added abilities around um, being able to collect donations or make part of the ticket a, um, a dedu deductible uh, amount so that there's uh, donations that you can solicit from ticket buyers as well as people who, who don't attend. So uh, there's a way to do that as well. Um, and all of your uh, ticket buyers and donors um, will receive custom confirmation emails, and you'll be able to customize those, and we give you some great defaults, but um, you'll be able to um, uh, customize those to your liking. And then finally, um, seeing the performance of the event, being able to track that is uh, part of uh, the offering as well. So let's start with some um, customer examples. And um, the first one we're gonna look at is a golf tournament. So as you can see, there's a, a, a ticket section up top, which allows this organization was uh, doing some sponsorships as well as, as um, uh, selling tickets. They, um, they branded it with, with the golf theme, and um, you know, they're, they're able to customize what the event looks like, the colors and their logos and things, as well as they had a little slideshow on the side. They also uh, added a little um, guest list on the side, and that's an optional thing, which is you know who's participating. And as people uh, buy tickets, you'll be you'll um, be able to see who else is coming as well. The key thing I wanted to point out on this one is is the whole sponsor section. So there is a sponsor section across the bottom, and you'll be able to upload logos. and And actually, the great thing about that is, as you'll see later, it, it it's uh, sponsors can get recognized in the in the Facebook app and some of the widgets and then also in some of the emails. So uh, that's great. Uh, the next example is an auction. A lot of organizations uh, do auctions maybe in the um, fall and winter time frame. Uh, and so this is a great time to start thinking about that. Um, one of the things that this example is showing is how you can offer a discounted ticket and it'll be available just for a window in time. So maybe you want to 
encourage people to buy a ticket early and kind of drive your um, ticket sales early on. And so you can maybe offer a discount. Um, a lot of people offer maybe a $10 discount or a 10% discount on, on a ticket uh, for a period of time just so that they can get all those initial signups uh, for their event. Uh, so that's that's a uh, great example, and, and you can see there. There's also tables that people uh, sell for auction. So those individual tickets and tables are typically uh, common things, and uh, we have some great functionality around that as well. This uh, this next option, this next uh, um, example shows all the different types of tickets. You know, somebody who's really used tickets in a lot of different ways. And this one actually happens to be a nonprofit as well, and so you'll see the donate uh, line there for people who can't attend. They can actually uh, donate and not go through the, the typical ticketing checkout process. So th um, they, uh, they've created a bunch of different types of tickets, and they've um, uh, set, as you can see, they've set a uh, maximum number of tickets to be sold for each type of ticket. And in, in this case, they've even made a T-shirt uh, a ticket. So someone can purchase a T-shirt and they, they can sell a few of those. And um, as I mentioned early on, a lot of this is, a lot of a successful event is driven by um, promotion of your attendees and of, of uh, people who might just be invited. And so we, uh, so right as part of the, um, as part of the event is a, is a call to action to, to get people to tweet about it or maybe post it on their Facebook page that they're, that they're going to be attending this event. Um, the next example is actually one where they're using the ticketing widget and they put this on their website. So not only can you have the, um, the hosted page that's, that's uh, part of the event marketing uh, offering, but you can also create a widget and put it right on your website so that you can engage people right there. So here's an example of that one where this um, Santa Barbara Police Activities League put their um, um, annual kid, Putting Kids First event right on their page. Their tickets are listed there. The uh, donations are listed there. People can go through and, and uh, choose uh, what type of tickets and how many they want and go ahead and check out. And as you can see, the sponsors once again are recognized below. So, so uh, being able to um, promote those sponsors in multiple venues may help you also drive uh, higher sponsorship dollars as well. Uh, the next example is Facebook. Certainly this is a great place to um, promote uh, events. It, since events are so, so social it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great venue to get people to buy a ticket and then share share about, about that ticket so here's the same event you set up the event once and then you install the Facebook app and uh, you can install it on your uh, the page you know the brand page or your company's page or for nonprofits their organization page within Facebook so it just um, installs there and will list whatever is uh, available from a uh, ticketing perspective. And uh, we'll show you more examples of the Facebook um, app as we uh, go along here and talk about promotion. So one of the, um, and I mentioned this a little bit previously, is one of the most important parts of creating a successful event is really the whole promotion and communication part of, of um, of the event organization. And so here, here on this um, uh, next slide, establish a time, uh, event timeline and communication plan. Uh, this just kind of gives you an idea of how you might go about not only creating your online event, but then going about promoting that event to make sure that it's the most successful event people are attending, sponsors are getting um, value from both the promotion and from having a high attendance at, at that event. So, you know, two months out, you might want to start uh, thinking about creating the event and beginning to solicit sponsors. So you may send out an email to those uh, sponsors and we'll kind of show you an example of that. Um, and maybe shortly thereafter, once you have um, 
procured some sponsors. If, if you have any, then you might send out a save the date. And um, that you might also want to do a, a tweet about that, maybe a Facebook post, so that you're really thinking about this from a multi-channel perspective and how you're going to reach more uh, people to attend your event. And then about a month out, you might um, install the Facebook app, get uh, the widget on your website, send out some, send out the real invitations, and uh, you might tweet about that as well. And again, post uh, on Facebook to your fans as well as have that app installed so that they can easily purchase from your Facebook page. And then just sending people reminders. So a lot of this is about keeping in contact with them and um, We'll, um, uh, there's a lot of great tools to, you can even schedule up reminders as part of following up with them. And certainly then sending thank yous to everybody that uh, did attend, maybe thanking your sponsors, thanking um, um, everyone who um, could attend, and then maybe doing a blog post afterwards and giving people an update about what, uh, what was great about the event and, and kind of summarizing uh, the success of that event. So that's just one uh, kind of a general, kind of a generic approach. But we think, you know, the whole communications plan is a big part of making making the event successful. Not just not just having the page, but having the plan to go along with it to um, really get this uh, promoted out into your um, um, to your database of um, of uh, known uh, folks. So let's talk a little bit about just creating the event. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take you through a few uh, steps of how simple it is to go ahead and create one. So um, this first event um, that we're going to go through is kind of an example of a, a Willie Nelson concert. And so as you create an event, the only thing you need is the name. And then you're, you're plopped into this, um, you're put into a, um, this editor. So, and as you want to change something, you just click on the section that you want, and then uh, the screen will pop up that has the event details, for example. So as, as you hover over a, a section, you'll just click on the, um, the details section, and that, that uh, window will pop up, and you'll be able to set the start times, um, where, where the location is going to be. The location gets defaulted to be your, the address of your, that's associated with your vertical response account, but you can obviously change that. And then you can also link to another website if you want, if you wanted to um, link it to a specific page or um, on your own website, or maybe it's being hosted by someone else and you want to link to theirs. So that's that's real simple way to kind of just get the um, initial setup done. And then, of course, the next important part is the, the tickets. So setting up the tickets, you just hover over the ticket section. There's kind of some examples there. Click on that, and you'll um, see that you'll be able to set up a ticket name, a price. If you click on restrict by date, you'll actually be able to say that it's available from and until a certain time. So that would that's great when you want to offer those early bird tickets at a discount or when you want to say that a higher price ticket comes in as of that date forward until the end. And maybe you want to stop ticket sales a few days before the event. So you can do that too. So you've got complete control over that. You can add a description that kind of really describes what is included in that ticket. So sometimes, uh, for example, if it's a golf foursome, that might include the golf cart rental, or you can tell people what it includes. And this is another, uh, the, the next uh, item is really key is attendees per ticket. So in that example of a golf course, and you can actually have uh, four attendees per ticket. So you'd be buying one ticket, but, they, but we know that that equates to four attendees. And therefore, you can collect um, guest information for those four attendees and make sure that you know when you're checking people in uh, who, who it is and, and uh, that sort of information. And then you can set a maximum number available. So in this example of a general admission, Maybe you want to set, you know, that there's only 200 available of this general admission ticket, uh, so that people know that it starts to count down as uh, it gets um, as tickets are getting scarcer. So um, 
then you save those and you can add as many as you want, as we've shown you in a few of these examples, and you can come back and edit these. You can edit them as long as they haven't been sold yet. So once you publish the event and the ticket's been sold, um, you won't be able to edit it anymore because it's obviously been sold. Uh, the next thing you'll probably want to do is maybe you have an event that you need to collect some information from your ticket buyers. And uh, in this example, we needed to uh, collect a t-shirt size for, uh, for one of the tickets. So we're able to just uh, click on uh, add or edit to any of those fields. And then we can give it a label so we know what we're asking the question and we can uh, you know, pick from a, you know, a check, a check box or a pick list as far as what we want them to be able to input, and uh, we can determine whether or not this field is required, and then we can uh, determine which tickets it applies to. So it doesn't have to apply to all tickets, and this gives you a lot of flexibility. So you're not going to encumber, you know, a general admission person and ask them what their T-shirt size is when it doesn't apply to them. So in this case, we're only going to, you know, have this T-shirt question apply to the VIP family pack. But notice that there's four attendees per ticket, and we really want to ask this question for each attendee. So we want to ask it for the ticket buyer and their guest. So this ensures that we get, collect all the information that uh, we need in order to be able to have the, you know, in this case, the T-shirts available at the event for these people to pick up. Uh, the next thing we probably want to do is um, uh, make it look a little bit better. So the default is a, uh, a nice blue, but uh, we know that uh, people want to get creative, and so we've put together a lot of themes that you can choose from, and you can just kind of scroll through the themes, but you can also customize your own colors and backgrounds and uh, links and such. So all that is um, you can configure all of those things. You can always go back to a standard template if you want. And then um, then the finished product looks something like this. So it's it's the, um, the Willie Nelson concert. It's uh, Saturday, October 22nd. And it's in Loveland, Colorado. It's got a video on the side. It's got some sh uh, social sharing already built in. And it's uh, recognizing some of our sponsors. And we'll talk about the sponsors in just a little bit. Uh, actually, next, we'll talk about uh, um, putting those sponsors in and, and getting some of those sponsors. So that's um, so. Let's talk about soliciting sponsors. So if you go to an event uh, dashboard, you'll uh, notice that there's a an item, a menu item on the left that says invitations. And when you select that, you'll already have an invitation uh, pre-created for you, and it's exactly like your event. So it's colored like your event. It's got the same content, so there's no reason to. What we've tried to do is make it really simple for you to be able to send invitations and reminders and not really have to do a lot of work to get there. And you've already set up your event, so you might as well leverage a lot of that branding and bring that into your invitation. So you can set a subject, and, and you can actually edit the body of the event. And in this case, we, we did. And you can add in merge fields as well. And because these are all going to go out through, you know, the typical um, email list, so you'll have those merge fields available. Uh, you can also turn on and off sections at the bottom. Uh, you can see the um, – you can, you can turn – uh, the sponsor section on or off, or the event details section on or off, uh, so that you can make it relevant to the uh, audience that you're trying to um, to reach. And in this case, we're trying to reach some sponsors from the last, from the last, uh, maybe some of our past sponsors. We're going to ask if they want to participate again, and then we're going to let them go ahead and click through and and uh, become a sponsor. Um, and as far as Addressing it, you just click to the next step. Once you set it up, you click to address it. And you'll see that on the uh, upper right-hand side, the mailing list that you have in your vertical response account are going to be there for you to choose from. So you'll be able to either pick your whole master list or, or uh, whatever list you have set up. So if you've done some segmented lists that you wanted to have already, you would see them right here. 
and you'd be able to drag them into the to field and, and either send it right now or uh, after you send a test, or you'd be able to schedule it up. So, um, so it's pretty simple to send out uh, these invitations. Once you set up your event, they're almost, it's almost as easy as addressing them, just kind of maybe configuring them a little bit and then addressing them, and uh, off they'll go. The, um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is how to then recognize those sponsors. So you've solicited them, I've shown you a little bit about that. Um, uh, once they, once you get a few sponsors, how do you recognize them? So uh, just like adding the tickets or editing the details of the event or uh, the sponsor section is also editable. So you can just go into edit mode on that, click on the um, uh, sponsor section and there'll be a little window that pops up that allows you to, you know, set the size. Uh, so these will all be properly sized for you. So, that, you know, if you pick the same, you know, large, um, medium or small uh, sponsorship level, they're all, the logos are going to get automatically sized for you. So you don't have to worry about that. You can then um, give the sponsor name and whether or not you want their logo displayed. You can, you can even link to the sponsor's website. So if you want that logo linked to the website, um, we allow you to do that as well. And, and uh, maybe it's a specific page on, on the, that sponsor's website they, that they've uh, negotiated with you to get. Uh, so you can set that up. Uh, a lot of times organizations like to just have the logo so that people don't click away from the event. And so you can do, we're giving you the flexibility to do it either way. And then the result is that, you know, you have your sponsors across the bottom of your event. And uh, as you've seen before, they're also going to be in your invitation. So next, let's uh, kind of move on to promoting your event. So the first thing, um, there's, there's a lot of different ways to promote an event and multi channel promotion is, is uh, what everybody's trying to be successful at. And what we're trying to do is make it easy for you. So we've given you a bunch of ways to promote it and, and kind of uh, uh, some ideas maybe you hadn't thought of. So you can embed it on your website, you can publish it to Facebook. You can just even get a, a widget or a button if that's uh, something that you wanna do and put maybe on a blog or on your, on your website. And uh, even uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, a shortened link will even be created automatically for you uh, to um, use for Twitter. So and that's the same link that um, we use when people use the social promotion that's on the event. So then you'll be able to actually see the link statistics, you know, how many people actually clicked through that and, and um, how many people are using that. So, uh, so that's all built in for you. So you can either use the long link or you can use the shortened link that's already there. Um, so lots of different ways. And I'm gonna kind of go into each one a little bit. And um, as uh, Jill said, as you have questions, type them in and we'll, we'll get to them at the end. So the first thing which uh, a lot of people wanna do is embed it on their website. So as you, if you would click on one of that option, uh, you would see automatically there'd be a, a little widget here, which is basically one that has the tickets listed, any sponsorships, and if you're a nonprofit, it would have the donation levels listed that you configured, and obviously the details about the event and your your, your logo that you associated to the event. And all you need to do is, is copy that top little um, um, uh, embed code text uh, that you see and uh, just paste it into your website. And as a result, that's uh, kind of the result that you would see. So if there was a sponsor, it's there. And as those tickets change or as those, um, as you, you might uh, have one that uh, expires after a certain amount of time, that would all be updated automatically for you on, that, uh, on your website. So that's a great way if you have an event page on your website already, you can just push this widget in there and uh, set it all up. Uh, another great 
way to promote is uh, inside Facebook. So there's a Facebook app, and you just install that. And as you install it, um, you'll um, get this social events for pages installed. You'll log in, and uh, it will pull in all your upcoming events. So, and then you can actually then click on them, similar to how you click to edit each of the fields on an event, you click to, to display or hide each of these events. So if you only want one shown at a time, you can, if, or if you want a whole list of them shown, you can. So, um, and once you're done configuring that, um, it will look like this. So uh, people coming can see your upcoming events. You can rename and relabel that, uh, that uh, tab. You can set it as the default. And people will see the whole list of, of um, events that are upcoming. And if they're specifically interested in that top one, they can click on that. And right inside Facebook, they'll get the details then uh, for that event. So they'll see that um, who, who's liked it already. They'll see the tickets that are available, and they'll be able to check out. The checkout process is actually done outside of Facebook. It starts, it creates a new window, and it lets them go through the checkout process. Um, so it's not done. So that part's not done inside Facebook because a lot of people are still a little bit uh, apprehensive about uh, doing uh, uh, credit card transactions inside of Facebook. So that actually pops in a new window. You actually see the um, uh, the lock on the URL so that people feel secure. And obviously, Twitter is a great way to promote events as well. And whether it's, um, and this is an example of one where someone has bought tickets and then they've actually hit the tweet this and, um, and it's posted to um, the, um, their, their, their uh, Twitter profile. And we, we automatically preform it with the event name and, and a hashtag of event. We put that shortened URL in that we talked about earlier so that everybody who uses that, you can see how, how the usage on that is uh, done. And the, the, uh, the great thing about this is that um, there's a st statistic that uh, people are about 10 times more likely to share or spread the word about an event after they've purchased the ticket. So having this, um, this prompt to uh, at the end of the ticket purchase process, which is where one of these uh, prompts is, it really uh, enhances the uh, opportunity for the people that are going to be attending to actually spread the word and say, hey, I'm coming to this. And it's also more meaningful for people who see it because they know that they're not just being promoted to, somebody's actually going to that event. And so it's a, it's a great way to promote. There's also widgets that you can create. These are flash widgets that are they kind of build and are, and are animated, and you can turn on and off that animation. Uh, there's lots of different configurations on it. You can create them to match your website or to maybe match a sponsor's website and uh, decide what you want to say on it. And uh, it will be, uh, you'll just save it and, and uh, use that little embed code at the bottom, and uh, you can put that on any website. So you can adjust the width. You can really... Um, uh, tailor it to the needs of the site that you're going to be putting it on. So uh, we talked a little bit about uh, invitations when we were talking about sponsorships and inviting the sponsors, but here's an example of, of how one might look that you, you get in uh, that one of your recipients would get uh, in email. It would be look almost exactly like the event, whatever the colors were. The, uh, the button to register is already there. Um, all the details about the event, and even your sponsors can be listed on, on these invitations. So that, um, you know, that's one of the great things that you can tell your sponsors is, is that um, um, you're going to get, you know, we're going to promote it to an email list of this large, and we're going to be promoting it to them multiple times, you know, along with the um, – size of the Facebook uh, fan base, you can really build uh, a value for, um, for sponsors. So that's what an invitation looks like. Reminders are much the same way. 
And so um, now let's talk a little bit about um, managing that event. So um, when uh, now that you've promoted it, people are going to be coming in and, and purchasing tickets. And uh, when that happens, uh, you'll get a uh, confirmation, and so will the ticket purchaser. So this is kind of an example of, of both. So you as the event organizer, you're going to understand what, what, um, what has been received or what they purchased, and uh, you'll also have this in your dashboard under some reports, but you'll automatically get notified as soon as it happens. And, the, um, and this is the email that you can tailor. Uh, we default a nice one for you. It's pretty nicely formatted, but then you can control um, and edit. You can add a logo to that, or you can add um, additional uh, verbiage or telling them to print it and bring it as part of their uh, entry. Uh, so you can be as, um, you can tailor those as much as you want, the ones on the right. And uh, those will go out every time someone completes a ticket purchase. And uh, they'll even go out if you um, uh, log an offline ticket purchase. So there is the ability to log an offline ticket purchase. And when you do that, if you have their email address and you put that in, you can check the box that says, also send them this confirmation email. And we'll generate that and send that out automatically. So let's talk about maybe the overall um, dashboard for your um, uh, for your specific event. This is one. Uh, this is an example of this Florida Wildflower Foundation, and they're doing a, a symposium and annual meeting. So this kind of th this one happens to be a nonprofit. So they've got additionally they've got some in the at a glance section. They've got some donations listed. They can see how how much has been. Uh, Sold from a tickets perspective and from from how many attendees they have overall and they had several tickets so that that uh, then ticket sales has a summary and it's broken out of how many tickets are sold and then at what price and what's the totals for those and if you had some limits on those ticket sales you can see how many would be still available so as, as you look at this stash you know there's the event set up and that was you know the editor that we saw where you just click and change it. The design themes, we talked about that. The receipt setup is, is the, tick, the uh, ticket confirmation that we talked about and the guest questions. Uh, I, I just told you briefly about offline transactions, but you can log all of uh, any offline ticket sales. You can log uh, directly in and, and generate, the, um, uh, generate the confirmation emails and also have a complete list of attendees as a result. Uh, the next little section is all promotion there on the left. And then um, finally, we've got uh, a couple of reports. And those are the next things that we're going to go into a little bit deeper. So let's uh, talk about the uh, registration report. So this is the list of attendees. And uh, so you'll have a full list. Uh, we've blocked out some names here, but you'll have first name, last name, and, and uh, the email address of the registrant, when they registered, uh, what ticket they purchased, and, um, and the status tells you whether or not they've completed all of their guest questions. And if not, you can either send reminders to those, or you can, um, uh, if they have phoned in their information, you can actually click the little pencil icon and, and, uh, and update their uh, guest information for them. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jill to kind of uh, close up on a couple of topics. And so, um, and once again, if you have any questions, remember to type them in, and we'll uh, we'll cover them in just a few minutes. Great, thanks, Eric. So I'm going to go through the pricing. Um, in order to set this up, hopefully you all know, but um, when you're in your vertical response account, you just need to click where it says events in that blue navigation bar, and it's going to take you to this event tool that we just went through. It's free to set up the event account, and it's also free to create the event. So I would definitely encourage you to go in there and take a look at the tool, see how it all works, see how easy it is, and then when you do have an event, it'll make it easy for you to go in and set it up. If you're selling a ticket, 
there is a fee involved, and it's up here. It's 2.5% um, of the ticket price, or if you have a donation, um, plus 99 cents per ticket. Um, if you are giving away tickets, you're just managing the amount of people who are coming to your event, um, and you're just giving the tickets away, um, there are no fees for that. And as Eric mentioned, there is a way for you to enter offline ticket sales, and if you do that, there's no fees involved with that. Um, any of the transactions where you're collecting money or donations will be done through PayPal. So you do need a PayPal account, although it's free to set one up and um, pretty easy to link it up in your events account. Um, the, the good thing about that is when somebody makes a purchase or they make a donation, that's going directly to you. So you'll have the fees, um, the money available to you as soon as it's paid. You don't have to wait for somebody to uh, dole that out once a month or whatever. So this is all going to be going directly to you. That's why PayPal is um, an easy way for you to do this. Um, PayPal does have some fees as well, and it kind of varies, and it depends on if you're um, a nonprofit or not. Um, but um, it's pretty inexpensive to manage your events, and as you saw in all of our examples, um, it's really easy to make a great looking event page and manage your events as well. So these are some of the benefits of um, using this events tool. Um, first of all, it makes it really easy for you to sell more tickets. Um, there's lots of ways, as you saw in the examples, for promoting your event. Um, email, obviously, an easy way to reach your audience. But more and more people are trying to um, get things done through um, social media, and there's a lot of options um, in this particular tool to share your event on your Facebook page. Um, your, um, the people attending your event will be able to share it on their Facebook page or on their Twitter, um, which will help spread the news. Um, if you're having an event um, that has a sponsor or you're thinking maybe sponsorships would be a good idea to help offset costs, um, there's some really easy, easy ways for you to um, not only solicit sponsors but to recognize them as well. Um, for nonprofits, again, it's very easy for you to get additional donations, uh, especially if people um, can't attend the event. They can still, they still have the option of donating to the nonprofit. Um, it also gives you lots of, um, uh, it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to manage the event because you're not going to have to spend all the time doing the work. The tool is going to do that for you. Um, and again, um, you don't have to use uh, direct mail. You can use your vertical response email account to send out emails directly to your list. So we're going to start taking some questions. Um, these are some resources available um, for using this events tool. If you go to our help site, help.verticalresponse.com, you'll see a tab there that says events. And there's lots of information there to help you. So um, you know, if you're trying to set up tickets or if you're trying to um, add sponsors to your event page, there's information available there for you. There's videos. The videos are all pretty short. There's also some text tutorials available for you as well. Our blog, blog.verticalresponse.com, is a resource for all kinds of things, but we also have um, done some blogs on um, events, so there's definitely some information there. And then um, to help you um, with a little bit more of this, we have a guide on our guides page. Our guides are free. Um, the link is there. The easiest way to get to our guides page is just to go to our website, verticalresponse.com. Click on Resources, and you'll see where it says Free Marketing Guides. Um, the one I would suggest for this is Event Marketing for Your Business, and there's some help um, on how to market events. 